Our final lesson in this unit on area is on geometric probability, and let's start out with a formal definition of what probability really means. What do we mean when we say probability? We are talking about the likelihood that an event will occur. So what is the probability that it's going to rain today? What is the probability that your bus is going to be on time? All right, so what is it? When the possible outcomes are equally likely, the theoretical probability of an event is the ratio, ratio of the number of favorable outcomes to the number of possible outcomes. So for example, suppose you toss a fair coin. What do we mean by fair coin? We just mean that it's not weighted in such a way that we're altering the randomness of the toss, okay? So suppose you toss a fair coin, like a penny or a quarter or something, what's the probability that the coin will land heads up, okay? So probability of getting a heads is the number of favorable outcomes. What is favorable? That we're going to get a head. So that's one. What's the number of possible outcomes? Two, right? We could get a head or a tail. So the probability that we'll get heads when we toss a coin once is one out of two. One half. Okay, another example, suppose you randomly pick a card from a standard deck. What is the probability that you'll pick a face card? Well, first we got to know, I'm going to put FC here for face card. We got to know what a face card is. What is a face card? It's a jack, a queen, or a king, right? If you don't play cards, jack, king, jack, queen, king. Okay, how many cards? So. Let's do this. Let's put our denominator first. What are the number of possible outcomes? That's the number of cards in the deck, right? How many cards are in a standard deck? 52. And how many face cards are there? Well, there are four suits, okay? We have hearts, diamonds, spades, and clubs. And so if there are 52, then each one of these has 13 cards. 13 times 4 is 52. All right, and how many face cards do we have in each suit? We have three, right? We got a jack, a queen, and a king of each suit. So if we have four suits and three face cards of each, that's 12, right? We got 12 face cards all together in a deck of 52. And then, of course, we want to simplify that, right? Four goes into both of those, so that's going to be 3 thirteenths. That's our probability of picking a face card if we just draw from a deck at random. All right, so now we're going to talk about geometric probability. Geometric probability. I'm going to abbreviate that prob. In geometric probability, points on a segment or in a region of a plane represent outcomes. So, for instance, I, I pasted this little excerpt from your book. It says point S on AD. So here's my whole segment AD. It's chosen at random. The probability that S is on BC, so somewhere in here, if I randomly picked a point on AD, and I want to know the probability that it's going to be on BC, I just take the length of BC, that's favorable outcomes, right, divide by the number of possible outcomes, and that would be the length of AD. So let's see how that works in an example. Point K on ST, so ST is the total length, is chosen at random. What is the probability that K is going to lie on QR? So I'm going to highlight QR here. So really, we want to know the total number, remember the total possible outcomes is going to be our denominator, so that's going to be the length of ST. So we're starting at 2, we're going to 14, so that's going to be 12, right? Total possible outcomes is going to be 12. And then what is the length of QR? Well, it's 1, 2, 3. It's 3 units long. So 3 out of 12 is our probability. So we got a 1 in 4 chance, a 1 in 4 chance of picking a point K that's on QR. Okay, how about this? Use the number line from the problem above. Find the probability that a point chosen at random on ST will be on QT. So here's QT now. So I can see from highlighting QT that the probability is going to be a lot higher than it was in the previous problem, right? So the probability that a point 
is going to be on QT, so I'm going to put probability of QT. The denominator we know is 12, right? Total length of ST. And what is the length of QT? Well, it's going to be 14 minus 5, right? And that'll be 9. And then when we simplify that, we got a 3 out of 4 chance. 3 out of 4 chance that if I pick a random point on ST, it's going to be on QT. So what's the probability that the point I pick would not be on QT? That'd be 1 out of 4, right? And what, so what would my percentage chance here be, guys? That would be 75%, right? But if I ask you for probability, I want the fraction. If I ask you for the percentage, then, of course, you would change that to 75%. There's a 75% chance that my point is going to be on QT. All right, how about probability and area? Point S is in region R. So let's say I'm going to just grab a point S here somewhere. The probability that point S is in region N, so I guess the probability that it's going to be there is going to be the area of region N. So that's the favorable, the favorable area to the total area, which is region R. So we're going to find the area of N and we're going to divide it by the area of region R. All right, let's see how that works in a problem. A circle is inscribed in a square, and what does that mean? It means this circle is tangent to this square at these four points. A point in the square is chosen at random. What is the probability that the point chosen lies somewhere in the shaded region? So our probability is the favorable outcome, right, is the, num is, yeah, the numerator, so the area of the numerator, so that's going to be the area of the shaded region, and then the denominator will be the total area. Okay, well, the total area is easy, right? That's going to be the area of the square. So let me come over here and do the total area. That's going to be 6 squared, which is 36 square centimeters, right? How am I going to get the area of that shaded region? Well, I got to take the total area and I got to do what? I got to subtract out the area of the circle, right? So the shaded area is going to be the total area minus the area of the circle. So how do we find the area of the circle? Well, the diameter of the circle is 6, right? Because it's the same as the length of the side of the square. So the radius is going to be 3. So the radius is 3, so the area of the circle is pi r squared, which is 9 pi. Right, 3 squared is 9. So the area of the shaded region then is going to be 36, and I'm going to subtract 9 pi. So here's what my probability is going to look like. The shaded area, we know, is 36 minus 9 pi. And the total area is 36. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to simplify this. I'm not going to leave it because I can see all these numbers here are divisible by 9. So I'm going to factor out the 9 in the numerator. That's going to give me 4 minus pi. I still got 36 in the denominator. This is going to simplify. 9 goes into 9, 1, goes into 36, 4. So my probability that I'm going to randomly pick a point that's in the shaded region there is going to be 4 minus pi over 4. And, of course, there are no units on probability because both of those would be centimeters squared. Numerator would be centimeters squared, denominator would be centimeters squared. Those would cancel. No units. There's our probability. Okay, we got a couple more examples and that's going to be it. Maybe I'll do one and then I'll let you do the other one. Suppose a dart lands randomly on this target. What's the probability that it's going to be in the shaded region? So the probability is going to be the area of the shaded divided by the total area, just like we did before. Okay. Actually, I think this would be good for you to stop right now. I think you can do these two problems because we did 
so much area finding in the previous sections in this unit. So you pause right here and work these two problems. All right. So I know to find the probability that my dart is going to hit the shaded region, of course my denominator is going to be the total area, my numerator is going to be the favorable area, which is the shaded area. So I started out by finding my total area, and it's just pi r squared. The radius, the ra uh oh, you know what, I think I messed up here because I think this is 8. This is 8. And I considered 8 to be the total radius of the big circle, and it's not. So you know what? Hold up. i got to go back and fix my answer. Okay, sorry about that. Let me have another go at this. All right, so I think the, t the radius of the t whole thing is 8 plus 4 plus 2, so that's 14. So my total area is going to be 196 pi. All right, now I need the area. Okay, the shaded area is going to be the area of the medium circle minus the area of the little bitty circle. So the medium circle has a radius of 6, right? 4 plus 2, so that's going to be 36 pi. And then the area of the little circle, its radius is 2, so I did have that right in the first place. But what that gives me for the area of the shaded region is 36 pi minus 4 pi, which is 32 pi. So now when I come over here to calculate my probability, the probability is actually 32 pi over 196 pi, the total area. And of course, when I simplify this, the pi's cancel each other out. And what I got when I simplified this, but guys, I am working quickly here with a time constraint, so please check me out on this. I think that the largest number that goes into 32 and 196 is 4, and when I do that, I get 8 49ths. Let me double check myself. 49 times 4, 6, 3, 196. I believe that's right. I believe that's the probability that if I throw the dart, it's going to land somewhere in here. But of course, double check me and let me know if I've made yet a second error. Okay, how about this one? Hopefully I didn't mess it up. A point is chosen in the circle at random. What's the probability that it's going to be in this sector, right? So of course I want to find the total area. The total area is going to be 9 pi, pi r squared. Radius of that circle is 3. And then the shaded region, remember what i got to do? i got to figure out what fraction... What fraction of the circle is this? Well, it's 80 over 360, which simplifies down to 2 ninths. And then i got to multiply that by the total area, which we just found was 9 pi. And when I do that, the 9s, of course, cancel, and I just end up with 2 pi as the area of that sector right there. So when I come and plug that in, 2 pi, the probability is... The favorable area divided by the total area, and that gives me a probability of two ninths. So I got a two out of nine chance of picking a point at random and having it be in that sector. Okay, so I wrote you a note that says for extra practice, go back to last to last set of notes and find the geometric probability that a chosen point will be in those shaded regions that you found the area of. I'm not going to put those answers up here, but of course if you want to do any of them in class next time, just say the word and we'll work them out. Maybe we'll put a couple of them up for a warm-up. Alrighty, see you next time.